In this question review of tutorial question 5, uh, we are required to have a good understanding of the use of our steam table. The question states that steam at 9 bar and 0.8 dryness fraction expands at constant pressure until the temperature is 230 degrees centigrade. We are supposed to calculate the work done and the heat supplied per kilogram of the steam. Now, we turn to our steam tables. In particular, if we look at page A4, our appendix A4, I'll write it down here now. we will be able to extract data from that page with regards to 9 bar. We have all the details concerning the steam at 9 bar and since the steam is wet, as we are told, dryness fraction 0.8, we can make use of internal energy, enthalpy, and as we will soon see later on when we advance to chapter 2, entropy. So the reason we do this is we want to pinpoint the start. 9 bar, 0.8 dryness. And we are told the steam moves at constant pressure. So this is an isobaric process. And this process takes our steam to a temperature of 230 degrees. Now, if we look at the saturation temperature, 175.4, we know that clearly at 230, the steam must be superheated. So we now advance to the superheated tables. So, if you will turn with me to page um, A7, okay, I will write it down, A7, we will be able to get data on the steam in the superheated conditions. So now we are told that this steam is at 230 degrees. Now, the data in our steam tables consists of 200, 250. So our data which is in between here, 230, is missing. So what we have to do is to interpolate. So let's get started. We need to calculate the volume of the steam. And we are told that from the steam tables, the volume that we have is 0.24788 cubic meters per kilogram. get this, if we look at our interpolation, which is over here, using the data from 200 and 250, if you look 250, the volume, specific volume is 0.25 nine six okay two five nine six at two hundred 
the specific volume is 0 0.2303. 0.2303 at 200 as we have said earlier is 0.2303 using the interpolation formula our unknown is y in this case we want to find v2 and we need it at 230 so by a quick calculation we will be able to get 2478 and that is our final volume and it is computed in the superheated range now we need to calculate v1 also because if you recall the work done which we are supposed to find is the pressure constant pressure times the change in volume we got quite nicely 0.248 to three decimal places. Now let's tackle V1. Now V1, remember, is in the wet zone. The mass is one kilogram, dryness fraction 0 0.8, VG2150. Okay, so if we look at the steam tables in the wet zone, our VG is 0.2150. We do a quick computation, we get 0.172 cubic meters per kilogram. With the 9 bar, we now change it to 900 kilonewtons uh, and multiply by the change in volume, we get the work done, which is 68.4 kilojoules per kilogram. Next, let's look at how we do the computation for the change of enthalpy. Recall the question. We need to find the heat supply. Okay, so let's get started. If we look at what we have done now, From the first law of thermodynamics, Q minus W, the heat transfer minus the work transfer is equal to the change of internal energy. But for the special case of a constant pressure, we can combine the work and the internal energy to give us the change of enthalpy. So now it's a question of finding the final enthalpy minus the initial enthalpy. Now, how did we get 2901.22? Let's look at our interpolation again. I will leave it as an exercise for you in the similar vein to what we were doing uh, using the interpolation for V. We now interpolate for H2. We know the data for H2 at 250 and 200 okay let's uh, do a quick uh, look at that H we look for 250 and 200 we now go down Okay, and we want to find the enthalpy at 230. We got the 200 value, which is exactly the same. And by a quick calculation, we get 2901.22. That's where we got the 2901.22 kilojoules per kilogram. Now, remember at H1, the steam was wet. So we need to go to the steam tables, the wet zone, to retrieve HFG and HF. Okay, if you recall the formula, 
to calculate the enthalpy H X is equal to H F plus X X H F G so how did we get H X we need to find H F first and then H F G so let's go to our nine bar wet table wet zone so nine bar there we are. If we look at HF and HFG, we fish these two data out. Go down. There we are here. 7432031 multiplied by the dryness fraction. And when we do the computation, we get the final answer. That's all.